that's amazing. 22 was full of stuff, good, bad, some indifferent. But the Lord showed me that what we've got to do starting today, we have to be able to put that behind us. Every pain, every accomplishment, every success, every disappointment, every bit of sorrow, we need to leave it back here because 2023 is going to be a ride like we've never seen before. Amen. There's going to be lots of new things taking place. There's going to be things where we're going to go through deep valleys. We're going to go through some fires. We're going to go through some waters that seem to be rising. We're also going to have the anchor to hold on to if we choose to. We've got to remember that he's the one that walks through those fires with us. We need to be able to trade every one of those sorrows, every one of those pains for the joy that he has in his salvation for us, in the strength that he has for us. We need to be able to put together our own hearts in him, give them to him, and to be able to lay down every bad choice we made, every mistake, like Pastor says, he accounted for our stupidity. So we need to remember that and leave it behind and then pick up with thanksgiving and lay it at his feet and then just allow him to make us those new vessels that new wine can be poured into. So we're going today, we're going to start a new thing. We're going to begin to open up the service with the shofar blowing. In the Old Testament, they would blow the shofar for many reasons. They would gather the people not just for warnings and what's ahead, but also for celebration. And who do we celebrate? But the one true king, the soon coming king, Jesus. Eric, would you pray, please? Good morning. Let's pray. Let's pray. Yellow microphone. Is it on? Yeah. Okay, now I can hear it. Thank you, Jesus. Abba Dad. We come this. We come today. Father, as we, as we start this new calendar, this new year, first, forgive us for our failures from last year. Forgive us when we did not stand up for you. Forgive us when we denied you before others, Father. Forgive us for our failures from last year. Thank you, Father, for that forgiveness. Restore in us the joy of your salvation. Your salvation is Yeshua. Thank you, Father. Pastor Leanne was saying, we release our failures. Our failures have been nailed to the cross. They are not put down on the ground. They are nailed to the cross. Thank you, Father, for your forgiveness. And Lord, Holy Spirit, pour upon us again that joy of your salvation. And that this year we stand victorious through all the battles that are coming. That we be your light, your salt in this earth. Because this the earth, the, the, the world does not know you. We have to be your salt and light so yes. that they will know you, yes. that you, Jesus, become, we reflect more, we become your image, yes. Yeshua, in this world. And that this year, when those trials do come, 
He will be standing with us in the fire. He will be holding back the waters. And we will be able to point, give you all the glory, Father. All the glory and honor belong to you. Abba Daddy. Name your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, our Savior. Amen. We pray you will open up your heart in a new way to worship the Lord today, understanding that he wants to go deep. He wants to go deep. Let's trade those uh, sorrows, those pains for the joy of the Lord.
thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you have done. 22 was amazing in so many ways, Lord. It was amazing. We got so many opportunities to grow in you. We got so many opportunities to see you working, Lord. But now it's time for us, Lord, to repent before you for our sins and our failures. It's time to recognize, like Eric said, Lord, the fact that we've not allowed you to empty the old wineskins so that we could become new. But I pray for every heart in here today. I pray for every heart watching us today that your heart would be melted. Repentance comes from godly sorrow within our hearts of where we have not held you in the highest esteem, in the highest place, Lord. So, Father God, as we walk through into this next year, please, Lord, begin to show us those places that, Lord, we have not put you first. Help us, Lord, to be that person that allows you, your child, to empty the old, to bring about a new wine skin, and Lord, then pull your new wine. Pour it into us, Lord.
that be your prayer today. Make me whatever you want me to be. Because I came here with nothing. But all you have given me is Jesus bring new wine. We praise you that you still have a plan, Lord. You have a plan that never changed from the beginning. It'll never change until the end, Lord. It'll never change. Eternity awaits us, Lord. Help us to have the hearts, Lord, to repent, to lay down everything, Lord, that's not of you, to lift you up in the sight of everyone, to make you first in our lives, Lord. First always. In Jesus' name, they all said, Amen. Give each other a high five or hug, whatever you feel comfortable with, and then have a seat. Blessings. We're going to do things a little different this morning. Say different is okay. Sometimes. How many of you have a routine? Like in your life, you have a routine. I like I love routines because I've never lost my car keys. When I go home, they go in the same spot every day. And my change goes in the same place every day. And I like routines. But I don't forget things. And the older I get, the more I need routines. Right? So we get comfortable with our routines. Today we're going to do things just a little bit differently. We're going to get some of the announcements done and out of the way. Because we've got a couple other things that I want to accomplish uh, before we leave this afternoon. And they're in order of importance as to what's going to happen. And I want to seal today with communion on something that the Lord has put on my heart that pertains directly to the storehouse. So can we have liberty to do things just a little bit different this morning? Yeah. All right. Hey, so real quick, some announcements we're going to fly through because you already know them. So if I can have my slides and we're going to swipe right, swipe. You have the app. If you don't have the app, you really should because our prayer requests go out on the app. And that's a very handy thing. And by the way, if you're not at church for some reason, the only reason would be because you're traveling or sick. You can actually pull up the sermon uh, on the app and the sermon notes are there. My notes are there with some fill in the blank stuff. And you don't know this, 
But the Lord told me in 2024, you can't get to heaven unless those blanks are filled in in your app. <laughs> so I'm giving you a two-year heads up to look at the app and fill in those blanks because that's required. Next up. <laughs> hey, Guardsmen, we're, uh, all of our ministries are coming back together again in January. Say hallelujah. We took some time off. But Guardsmen are meeting the uh, first and third Saturday of the month. I didn't bring my book. But we have a new book for you guys. It's a new study we're doing. Uh, 20 lessons on how to, I don't want to mess it up. But the books are in. They're actually in my office. And I don't want to say it wrong. Um, you will be meeting Saturday the 7th. Uh, we'll have breakfast here. We're giving you your books. The books will take us through 10 months. So it's a one-time investment of a mere $20. I did the math. If you do that for 10 months, it's 43 cents a meeting. Someone said, well, $20, that's steep. No, it's 43 cents a meeting. <laughs> Less than 50 cents for you to participate. And it's an excellent Bible study on developing friendships and being, uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Next up. Our Mountain Movers are meeting the fourth Sunday. That'll be the fourth Sunday in January, correct? Yes, yes. and the next Saturday too. And next Saturday as well. I'm assuming you're plugging into all the parents and they know all this. Of course you are. Next up. Uh, don't forget, Pastors Dan and Barb have started our coaching connection, and they are available to meet with you on a variety of topics. They are all about relationships and successful relationships uh, and, and, and getting you connected with the Lord so that you can progress in your walk with the Lord and your relationships one with another. Next up, 21 days of prayer and fasting. I want to talk about this for a minute. Foursquare is starting this on January 9th through the 29th. However, at this church, we have a celebration Sunday scheduled for the 29th. You see where I'm going with this, right? And I don't want to have celebration Sunday and not eat. Because to me, that's not celebrating. Right? So I'm, I am just giving you the liberty, if you want to start on the 8th and finish on the 28th, we will truly celebrate on the 29th because we're going to have you guys bring in meals and stuff and maybe we'll have more than, you know, fruit and pastries. So I'm starting on the 8th and I'm going to be finished on the, on the 28th. But we will be posting on uh, our Facebook page and our website and probably the app the daily prayer reminders from Foursquare. So you can at least keep the prayer vigil going the same as Foursquare is from the 9th to the 29th. This is important because we're praying with four square believers from around the world. And there is such power in unity. We will be the worldwide church praying together for the same things. That is amazingly powerful. Amen? Next up. Hey, our ladies are meeting January 15th. That is here at the Fellowship Hall, Dorothea. Okay, here at the Fellowship Hall. My wife has all those details. There's a Bible study, yes? Okay, perfect. There's food, yes? No, no, no. Nay, nay. There shall not be food. Next slide. <laughs> Celebration Sunday is January 29th. That means this. That means that we're going to have a, a worship service that is focused on celebrating the Lord. We are counting on your testimonies about what God's done in your life uh, throughout the last few months or so. Come prepared to share what God has done because your testimonies encourage other people and we need to know that God is moving to encourage one another. Say amen. amen. Next up, Pastor Dale. Don't touch that button. You're alive. Just don't touch the button or the shock collar goes off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It is my privilege to share with you, uh, with regard to this announcement that we've now seen this uh, several Sundays in a row. So I get to share with you the vision for this. Okay. And it's a very ambitious vision. Um, and it's a long-term vision. This this is, uh, we're, we're only going to focus on this year, but... Trust me, this is a long-term vision, okay? So it's a fantastic opportunity that's being offered to us here by the Lord. Uh, and I say it's an opportunity because, you know, the Lord never never beats you upside the head and says, you have to do this, right? right. You know, it's he, he presents an opportunity and it's up to us to buy into it, yes. right? Yes. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to get to share this thing. There's there's three major components uh, to this vision. All right. Uh, so the first part of that, uh, the number one is actually we're going to do a Valentine's banquet for couples. Uh, notice I didn't say married couples. I said couples. Um, it can be couples. Okay. Uh, as we have advertised up here, Saturday, February 11th at 6 p.m., this first time around, we're going to do it in the fellowship hall. Okay. Um, this is going to be uh, limited to 16 to 18 couples. Uh, we'll talk more about that later on. Uh, the idea is to make this a really elegant dinner. Okay, so when I say elegant, we're talking about all the amenities of elegance. All right, so what we're saying here is we're going to dress up a little bit. Uh, no tuxedos. We don't need tuxedos and ties or anything. But as uh, Pastor describes it, it's going to be like business casual. All right, so no shorts, no Crocs, and no spiked hair or anything like that. No spiked hair. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now it's, the call. it's going to include a, a full meal, a full a four course meal. Okay, now we haven't planned all that yet, but we're going to get right into that. Also, there's going to be uh, three $50 gift cards for restaurants uh, given away at this thing. So, um, and I might even donate my bobblehead Jesus that I got for Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, it's a very special Christmas gift, and I'd be hard pressed to give that up. No um, the last part of the component number one is that our teen group is going to be serving dinner. All right, we're going to talk more about that too. But the second part of this component, or second component to this vision, is this, and this is also very important. There's no no importance greater in any one of these, okay? They're, they're all equally important. The second part of this is that it's a time to reach out to other couples, okay? It's not just to invite them, but to make an investment in, in other couples. All right, so um, I already have at least two couples in mind that I'm gonna be inviting. I've already talked to one, matter of fact. Um, but like, can I say that uh, Barbara and I just celebrated 50 years to, together and that and that that didn't happen uh, because we were absolutely wonderful. Uh, I'm going to tell you this happened because people invested in us. I mean, there was a number of people that made serious investments into our marriage uh, way back in, in 1980, um, and I'll I can tell you a lot about that. Okay. Uh, so investing in other people is very necessary. And this is one of those times when you can invite another couple and even pay their way. All right. Uh, make it free. Make it free for them so that they have opportunity to come and, and learn uh, something. Okay. Um, I'm hoping to have some printed invitations, uh, which you can personalize and even pass out. Now, component number three is has to do with the teenagers, right? And since a teen group will be serving, we will have them do all the setup, do all the tear down, uh, do the cleanup, and they will serve our guests. Ah, now, they get to eat first though, and that's purposeful, okay? Uh, we wanna know that the food is fit to eat. Uh, so, yeah, the, but the, the, the side of that then is that the profits from this dinner, and I said the profits because there will be food, there'll be stuff to purchase and all that. The profits from this thing will go to a teen group fund. How do you know that our, our teen group has never had, uh, maybe, I don't know if never, uh, I don't know if you've done in the past, but uh, every church I've been in, the teen group has had a budget of their own. They've had money to work with so that the leaders can do things with the team group. Well, we're going to start that. So the profits from this uh, dinner will go into a team fund. And that may not be a lot of money. We, we really don't know, but it'll be a beginning, as will the, the vision for this. Okay? 
I know all of you have a lot of questions regarding all the details of this opportunity. Um, so to cover all those details, I'm asking that uh, all of you that are interested in helping with this, and I hope it's a lot of you, because we need a lot of help. Uh, let me tell you, Barb and I can't do this. Uh, we just need a lot of help to pull this thing off. And so I'm going to ask you to meet with us after church today, after there's other meetings going on first. Uh, but after that's all over with, uh, we'll just gather uh, in the fellowship hall and, and just kick this thing off, all right? Um, we're going to need a lot of help with food. We're going to need a lot of help decorating. We're going to need help sourcing materials. Uh, now, I have uh, one major caveat that will go with this. So, ladies, if you can get your man to bring you to the Valentine's banquet, then you need to make sure he gets off the man camp, too. Okay? Well done. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So we need to get behind this. I think this is an amazing ministry opportunity. What an amazing outreach opportunity. And what a time just to be together and celebrate love. If you do not have a Valentine's Day, one will be appointed to you. <laughs> We're a full service church, so some of you are looking around going, oh no. So yeah, we're going to make that happen. So um, just to clarify, our other meeting got canceled today. So during fellowship time, if you would, after Dale is, finishes his council duties, uh, get with him today because we need help. We need food prep. We need decorators. Uh, we have to transform that building over there into something, in, into elegance. And I don't have that skill set. Thankfully, God has brought people to this church that have that skill set. Say amen. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's keep moving. We got to finish because I got a lot to do this morning. Man camp. Dale Segway was so perfect. We are scheduled for February 24th through 26th. All of the details are on our website. Click on events. It'll take you there. But we do have this really cool theme. <coughs> We're talking about being in the zone. We're talking about being fiercely focused on what God's called us to be and do so that we finish this race victorious. Amen. And that's what Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2 talks about. I don't want to spoil this, but we've got some exceptional speakers lined up. We've got uh, our brother Steve Flanagan, who's been here doing worship. He's doing worship for the weekend. It is going to be an exciting time. Go to our website, click on events, sign up. We need you to sign up as early as we can because we're giving you free t-shirts and we need to know your t-shirt size in time to actually order the shirts. All right, next up. Uh, listen, you know that we still need money for the house next door. We're not going to go on that this morning. Ask the Lord what to do. I'm trusting this church. We're going to make this happen. We desperately need the, uh, between the, we need the $11,000. I don't know what else to tell you. I'm asking the Lord to do it and I'm trusting God. So I'm believing God to do it. That should conclude announcements, correct? Yes. All right. Let's wash those away. Can you take a minute and just say, Hey Father, we thank you this morning for your presence in this church, Lord. And I know we disrupted things a little bit, but I wanna, I wanna bring this congregation back into focusing on you. And this morning, Lord, for the next few minutes, I pray that everything that is communicated will glorify you. I pray, Lord, that as we delve into your word, that you provoke us into thought and provoke us into action as to where you're setting a course in our individual lives for this year. You're so good and so gracious, so loving and kind. Lord, I know this pastor wants more of you in my life. I want more of you at the storehouse, more of you present in our midst every time we meet. And throughout the week, the Spirit of God would flow through our lives and it would draw others to you in your name, we thank you this morning. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So I'm pondering over the last few weeks what this service looks like. It's, it's a one-off service. We're not doing a series this morning. We're going to come back to Matthew in a couple of weeks and continue on in Matthew chapter 5. But as I was praying over the last couple of weeks, and especially this week in particular, I feel like the Lord is asking this church a question. And this is an interesting message this morning. We're not really preaching. 
we're going to outline something that's for your benefit today. So can we do that? Say amen. amen. So I think the Lord is asking you the, a question this morning. And here's the question. What do you want me to do for you? I thought, well, Lord, that's, a, that's an interesting question. And so I looked it up, and there's two times in the Bible where Jesus asks this question. The first time is when he meets Andrew and his brother. And he says, well, what do you want from me? And they answer him. They say, well, we just want to know where you stay. And he says, come and I'll show you. And they leave because it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. And they go to where Jesus is staying. But there's an interesting scripture and an interesting event in Mark chapter 10 that we're going to look at this morning. It's a pretty familiar story, but I want to show you what I think the Lord has provoked in me. And maybe it's for you as well. So maybe I'm just preaching to myself this morning, but it's a pretty good sermon. You should probably pay attention. <laughs> Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Then they came to the city of Jericho. When he was leaving, he being Jesus, when he was leaving the city with his followers and many people, a blind man was sitting by the road. He was asking people for food or money as they passed by. And Mark does something interesting here. He names who this beggar was. And he gives him some dignity. His name was Bartimaeus, and he was the son of Timaeus. He heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. He began to speak or cry out with a loud voice, saying, Jesus, son of David, take pity on me. But the people around him spoke sharp words to the blind man, telling him not to call out like that. But he spoke all the more, and he said, son of David, take pity on me. Jesus stopped, and he told them to call the blind man. They called to him, and they said, take hope. Say that with me. Take hope. Take hope. Stand up. He is calling for you. And as he jumped up, he threw off his coat, and he came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Lord, I want to see and Jesus said, go, your faith has healed you. And at once he could see and he followed Jesus down the road. Now look, this is a pretty self-explanatory scripture, but let me give you just a little bit of, of context here because if you've known me for any amount of time, you know this. I think sometimes we read the Bible and we read them as Bible stories and we don't put our, we don't put the people's emotions and who they were and where they are in life in what's really going on here. So I want you to consider this. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. It'll be the last time he goes to Jerusalem because it's during this trip where he is forsaken by Judas. He is, he is beaten, tortured, and executed for our sins. So he's on his way to Jerusalem. And what's taking place at Jerusalem at this time? Uh, no? The Passover is taking place. The census was last week. <laughs> <laughs> the Passover is taking place. Literally, I've read reports and studies on this that up as many as 200 to 250,000 people are embarking upon Jerusalem. So it's interesting that the scripture mentions that Jesus is coming out of Jericho. Here's why. The Galilean Jews are making this pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Passover by the hundreds of thousands. But they won't go through Samaria <laughs> still. So they circumvent Samaria on the east side of the River Jordan, and they, they cross the river uh, through Perea, and they come back over through, uh, through Jericho, which is literally at the edge of the wilderness. And in Jericho, it's the last phase before they start the steep incline up the road to Jerusalem. Still with me? So in Jericho is this blind beggar on the side of the road. We don't know how long he's been blind, but it's interesting because many of the uh, other versions say when Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? He says, I want to see again. So it kind of gives us the impression that he wasn't always blind. But the problem with being blind in the first century is that you're fully dependent on the people around you to guide you, to move you, to help you go make money. And the only way you can, which was to beg on the side of the road. 
And Bartimaeus was considered the lowest caste of society because of his handicap. And <laughs> I'm reading this, and I'm trying to get this picture in my head. So Bartimaeus is sitting on the side of the road, and these throngs of people are going by. We get this impression that it's like just Jesus and his disciples. There's hundreds of thousands of people heading to Jerusalem. Now, they're not all coming this path, but a lot of them are. And in the midst of this gaggle of a crowd moving through Jericho, this lone man sits on the side of the road and he hears that Jesus is coming by. So Jesus' reputation as a healer has already been well known. And he starts to cry out, Jesus, son of David, heal me, listen to me. <laughs> And the crowd looks at, first off, most of the crowd ignores him. They just walk by. And then some of the crowd, who are probably standing close to him, start telling him, dude, stop. Seriously. Stop being such a nuisance. Shut up. And they rebuke him strongly. <laughs> But it doesn't stop him. He says, I don't care what the crowd is. By the way, can I tell you something? The crowd is usually wrong. So he cries out all the more, Jesus, son of David. And then something remarkable happens. Somehow, the cry of this man's voice sitting on a curb gets to Jesus among the throng of people and Jesus stops and hears him and says, bring him to me. <laughs> I just think it's amazing. On his way to Jerusalem, for what he knows will be his last time, Jesus still stops and helps the lowest of lows. And I think it's intentional that he asks him this question. You think, well, that's an odd question to ask a blind man. What do you want me to do for you? But Jesus is causing him to focus and reflect on this moment that he has in the presence of the Lord. You, we get these moments in the presence of God where God wants to know specifically, what do you want me to do for you? You've got my full attention. Can I say to you this morning? You have the Lord's full attention. Amen. And this sounds like a crazy question, but I'm at, the Lord is saying, what do you want me to do for you? Here's the problem with that question. I believe God is asking you individually this morning, what do you want me to do for you? But here's the challenge with that question. It almost sounds like what we would hear the genie ask when he comes out of the lamp. And for many people, that's what Jesus is. When we're in trouble, we rub that lamp. When things aren't going well, we rub that lamp and out pops Robin Williams. That's a reference to the movie Aladdin for those right, of you. Yeah. <laughs> so out pops Aladdin or the genie. And then we get, we, we, we give him our request and here's the thing. I'm not going to say we because this church doesn't do that. So people give him their request and then instead of putting him back in the lamp, they just simply close their Bibles until the next time they need help. Jesus. Jesus is not a genie. He's stopping to give us his undivided attention and saying very specifically, what do you want me to do for you today? But you know what? It's easy to, it's kind of easy for us to look at our prayer life and focus our prayer life on what we want. But that's not what our prayer life really ought to be. James gives us a very strong warning to the church in his letter in James chapter 4. He says this. He says, look, church, you don't have the things. Actually, if you back up and read the first verse, he says, look, you are trying so hard to get things in life that you're willing to murder each other. It's a pretty strong rebuke. So I'm going to tone it down a little bit. And he says this. You don't have the things you want. 
Simply because you don't pray for them. You don't have what you want because you don't ask God for them. And by the way, when you do pray for things, <laughs> you're not getting them because you want them for the wrong reasons. Jesus. For your own pleasure. Mm. Let me tell you what that looks like. Lord, I seriously need a new job. The pressure at this job is terrible. My boss is a world-class idiot. And my coworkers are all bananas. And I'm never going to get anywhere on this job because I'm surrounded by monkeys. The reason you're asking to be removed is for your benefit. Whereas maybe what our prayer should be is, Lord, I know you've got me in this circus with all of these monkeys. What's my role? Where do I, where do I play in ministering to the people around me? What do you have for me here? And if it isn't for me here, then God remove me to somewhere else where my testimony will shine and my life will make a difference. God says sometimes we don't get what we ask for because we're asking it so that we can heap it upon ourselves. That's not what this is about. I love when Jesus teaches us to pray. He says, look, your prayer should be thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, just like it is in heaven. Jesus is telling us, move your selfish desires aside because there's so much of a greater picture going on here that God wants to use us in his great picture here on the earth. And my prayer needs to be, Lord, what is your will and how do I fit into your will so that I can impact lives for the kingdom of God? Isn't that a great way to change our prayers in 2023 if you're not praying that way? So let's, let's make sure that we don't read the scripture as the genie mentality, that Jesus is coming into our lives to serve us and say, what can I do for you? However, he does ask this question to Bartimaeus. And I do believe in a scriptural context, God is asking us that question today. Can you say amen? amen? So today, I think Jesus is asking you to be specific he wants you to be intentional as you reflect on this. And he's asking, what exactly do you want from me, from God in 2023? Do you want healing for yourself or for a loved one? Do you need improved finances so that you can do more for the community and the kingdom of God? Do you want healed relationships? Do you want the ability and the willingness to be able to forgive people? <laughs> and I was thinking, well, Lord, maybe we just need an attitude adjustment. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. We need attitude removal. <laughs> maybe you need an attitude removal this morning for 2023. Maybe you need deliverance from a particular sin or from, or from a destructive habit. Maybe you strongly desire the ability to hear the Lord more clearly or to have better understanding of God's word or simply to have greater heavenly wisdom. This morning, in just a few minutes, we're going to take some time to reflect on this question. What exactly do you want from God in 2023? You should have given, been, you should have in your possession a card inside an envelope at this point in time. If you don't, raise your hand and we'll make sure we get them to you. Everybody has a card in an envelope. We do one for Jose, if we could, please. Everyone else has one? Good deal. In a minute, I'm going to have you write some things down, but don't get ahead of me yet. Because here's something the Lord showed me that I want to share with you this morning. As I was reading through this passage about blind Bartimaeus, some very particular, something very particular struck me. And this is what I want you to ponder before you write down what you want God to do in 2023. <coughs> 
There was effort on Bartimaeus' end to get to Jesus to bring his request to him. And I thought about that effort. He was loud. He was obnoxious. He wouldn't take no. He was stubborn. But if you put all that in a positive spin, there were some other things I really liked about him. He was determined. He was focused. And he was unstoppable. But this passage prompted me to ask myself some questions. And I want you to ask yourself these questions as well before you right now where we're going in 2023. First question the Lord asked me was this. Am I willing to cry out to the Lord? Bartimaeus was willing to make whatever noise it took to get the Lord's attention. Maybe for this pastor and others, the Lord is stepping up what it's going to, what it's going to take to really be in the Lord's presence and attention. That it's no longer just, you know, five minutes of prayer a day or ten minutes of prayer a day, whatever that is, that the Lord is saying, look, we're going to elevate our game. Am I willing to really take the time to cry out of desperation to the Lord? Do you think Bartimaeus was desperate? I think Bartimaeus absolutely was desperate. Are we willing to cry out to the Lord? Then the Lord asked me this. Next. Am I willing to be persistent? Bartimaeus was unstoppable. I don't know how many times <coughs> you may or may not, or I have, prayed about things and they didn't come to pass. So we just stop praying about them. Or know that the Lord's called us to do something and it doesn't seem to be working out the way we thought it should work out. So we just stopped doing it, but God didn't release us from doing what he's called us to do. Am I willing to be persistent? Next question I asked myself was, am I willing to stand despite opposition and criticism? You may be crying out to the Lord for things out of desperation and other people around you as you share this with them may actually say to you, that's nuts. God is, God's not going to do that in your life. Why are you pestering God with such a request? Are you willing to stand despite the opposition and the criticism? Because people who don't know Jesus don't know you. And they don't know what God's put in your heart. God and the Holy Spirit knows what he's placed in your heart. Am I willing to stand despite the opposition and the criticism? Am I willing to move toward the Lord? Jesus stopped, and I love this, and heard Bartimaeus, but he didn't go over to Bartimaeus. He said, bring him, bring him to me. There's going to be some action and effort here. Or am I willing to get up from what I'm doing and get into the presence of the Lord? Jesus. Am I willing to make that journey? Am I willing to set things aside and drop what I'm doing and be in the presence of God? Next question he asked was this. Am I willing to give up that <coughs> which seems so important to me? An almost insignificant part of this event says this. And Bartimaeus stood up, threw off his coat, and went to Jesus. And I'm reading this, and the Lord shows me this. There was two issues with the coat. One... He couldn't run in it, couldn't walk in it. It was big. It was a wraparound thing. It was huge. So he threw off what would have hindered him from coming to Jesus. Am I willing to do that? But here's the other thing the Lord showed me, which is really kind of cool. When Bartimaeus sat down, he sat on the coat with the coat open in front of him. And that's where he collected his alms and his offerings. It was the representation of his source of revenue. Am I willing to lay down and give up whatever it is that seems so important to me if the Lord says, to come to me, you'll need to set this down? See, for God to move in our lives this year, we need to be willing to make some efforts of our own. Can you say amen? You guys are really quiet out there today. Next question is this. What do I want to see? 
when I make my request to Jesus, what do I want to see? Bartimaeus wanted physical sight. There's things I want to see happen in my life, in my church. I'm asking you this morning, what do you want to see? Next question. Will my answer in prayer help me to see Jesus? Is that some, you know when he was healed, what was the first thing he saw? Jesus. My cautionary note to you this morning is this. As we ask God for things and God grants us those desires, will they draw us to Jesus and cause him to see him? Or do we walk away feeling victorious, not needing Jesus again till our next crisis? I hope my answered prayers will help me to see Jesus. Next question is this. And will I follow Jesus? Will I remain consistent? Bartimaeus became a disciple of Jesus. The Bible says that he followed Jesus up the hill and into Jerusalem. And he was most likely present during Jesus' execution. We don't go on to read where he fit into the church afterwards, but I'm inclined to think that if Jesus heals you on the way to his execution and you see his execution, you're probably a lifelong follower. So we'll answer prayer. Help me to follow Jesus. The reason I say that is this. I've seen people who have asked the Lord to provide things in their lives and the Lord has given them what they've asked for and those very things have removed them from God's presence and taken them away. Will I still follow Jesus once my need has been met? I believe there's people in the church that only follow Jesus because they have needs that need to be met. And that's not unscriptural. A lot of people follow Jesus as long as there was loaves and fishes. Yeah. And he said to them, wait, now that I don't have any food or fish for you at this point, you stop following me. He says, where are the crowds? You know what I love about this group right here? We're not the crowd. <coughs> We're not the ones interested in following Jesus because of what he can do for us. We are the ones interested and committed to following Jesus because of what we can do for him in our calling and our design. Amen? So, will this answered prayer allow me to still follow Jesus? Will it encourage me to follow Jesus? And the answer to that is yes. All right. Are you still with me? Say amen. amen. So I want you to, we're almost done. I want you to consider the greatness, <coughs> excuse me, because uh, I'm almost out of voice. I want you to consider the greatness of what's just happened here. Jesus on his way to Jerusalem to face the cross, he hears the cry of the lowest member of society. He stops and he invites Bartimaeus into his presence. He listens to his need and he rewards his faith. Here's what I love about this. No one is insignificant to Jesus. No one is too insignificant to Jesus to command his attention. He said it again. No one is too insignificant to Jesus to command his attention. A leper, a woman with a hemorrhage, little children, and now a blind beggar, all have received Jesus' care. There is nothing in your life that is insignificant to Christ. So we're going to do a couple things this morning. And just to let you know that as your pastor, I agree with this. You know what? And I forgot to do something else. I even wrote myself a note. I have already written down what I want the Lord for me to do, what I want the Lord to do in me in 2023. You have cards in front of you inside these envelopes, and you should have pens. We're going to do a couple of things here. I have a song that's coming up that I love that we're going to use as a time of reflection. And I want you to write down what you want God to do for you, in you, and through you in 2023. Then you're simply going to put your name on the front and you're going to seal this. And we've decided as leadership that you're going to turn these into us. Because if you take them home, you'll lose them. That was unanimous, by the way, in the people I've talked to. Oh, no, no, Pastor, that will not work. I will not find mine in three weeks. So on your way out the door today, you're going to put these in the offering basket. We're going to hold them for you. And at some point in time yet to be determined, we're going to have a celebration of opening these up and seeing what God has done in your life. 
I will give you a spoiler. It's most likely going to be just before a celebration Sunday. Because I'm believing God for great things. And then we're going to seal all of that by taking communion together. Does that sound like a plan? Say amen. amen. So guys, if you would put this video on, you're going to have about six and a half minutes to really, and I want you to pray about this. I want you to be before the Lord and say, Father, what is it that I need from you in 2023? I have four or five things on my card. It's not necessarily a letter. I'm a more of a bullet point guy. However you want to do this, this is up to you. We're going to play this piece of music. Uh, I love this song. It's one of my favorites. And um, I just want you to reflect on what you want from God coming up this year.
Father, we thank you and we worship you this morning. And Father, we come before you this day. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for this time of reflection. We thank you for this time of forward focus. We thank you, Lord, for this time when you have invited us into your presence and you are asking us individually, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, today we've we've made those requests known to you in the form of paper and in the form of prayer. And we want to seal this today as a commitment that we're willing to hear your voice, willing to move towards you, willing to lay things down if necessary, willing to follow you. Mm. We want to be in your presence and your will this morning. Lord, we want to set this as our goal for this year, as our focus for this year. Lord, in your name, let's get ready to take communion. If you take your cups, open up the element. Lord, we know that you took the bread on the night you were betrayed and you broke it after giving thanks. And you said that this bread represents my body, which is broken for us. Lord, we don't take lightly that we can come into your presence and, and answer your question, what can you do for us? Matter of fact, it's with, it's with overwhelming humility we answer this question because we know what you have done for us yes. to bring us to that place. You. Your deliberately and intentionally broken body that you laid aside for us. May we never forget the sacrifice you made to show your love for us, greater love, has no man than he laid out his life for his friend. <laughs> and while we were yet sinners, you gave your life to us. We remember that and thank you this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody ate. We know, Lord, that also on the same night you took the cup and after giving thanks, you said this cup represents my blood, which is a new covenant. And we know that in this covenant, it's only the shedding of blood that removes our sins. <laughs> and while the blood of animals and goats and others weren't cutting it on a permanent basis, Father, you had a permanent plan to your son Jesus. And as you have covenanted with us, to forgive us our sins. I make a covenant with you this morning to do what's necessary in my life to bring about these requests so that my life will glorify your kingdom and bring people to you. I thank you, Lord, that in this cup today, there's strength and there's healing and there's forgiveness of our sins. We give you thanks and praise. Everybody said amen. amen. Enjoy it. Can you give the Lord some praise this morning? Come on, hallelujah. All right, a couple things I forgot to do because I'm not myself today. There's two slides that were before my sermon, and I forgot to put them up and bring some people up. Tell us what's going on. So, um, did you find those? One says Christmas gifts. Miss Rachel, come tell us what success we had with your Christmas gifts gift drive for our local families. Good morning, happy new year everyone. <laughs> so I had three families, total of nine kids. You guys are awesome, thank you so much. Um, they all had presents, gift cards, some toys. The teenage girls had some makeup stuff. Um, we have a picture that will probably come up of one of the boys that received the yeah, Xbox. No, actually I couldn't get those pictures, they were too small. Oh, no. Okay. Well, I did have pictures. I'm sorry, guys, but everybody loved everything, and 
Thank you. I couldn't do it without you guys. So just thank you so much. And God is always on time. Amen. Thank you, Rachel, for doing what you do. That was amazing. So we got to help local families and families throughout Central Florida. I love that God puts that on Rachel's heart and that we as a church can touch the lives literally of people in our backyard. Can you say amen? amen. Also, our youth group did something really cool for the assisted living facility. Chris Marcia is going to come up and tell us about that a little bit. And we do have a picture of that as well. So, Eric, either one. Thank you. I got a five second warning. You're going up. <laughs> well, this is the picture at the assisted living in Sanford. This is the facility that Miss Peggy has told us her, her husband has been in for years. So we collected a lot of different things. There were some clothes items, uh, blankets, some you know, games to play. You know, adults, we may be old, but we still like to play games. So there's, but no video games. Uh, it wasn't video games, but there were games. There were clothing items, um, DVDs of, that they could watch and so forth that we donated, and especially the cards. Since each other. We were happy receiving the cards than donations. Mm. Yes, yeah, since each of the uh, the kids had written out a card and received a Christmas card, it really seemed to touch their hearts. Thank you to the youth for uh, for stepping up and helping with that. Unfortunately, we had wanted to go and actually sing. Years ago, I was part of a barbershop course. One of my favorite things by Christmas was we would go and carol at the uh, nursing home. Ah, uh, I guess that's maybe a thing of the past. We, they don't allow anybody under the 18 into the facility, so we couldn't. Uh, we didn't get the opportunity to go and sing for them. Excellent. Thank you so much. Can you give them a hand? All right, so we are making a difference in our community. We are reaching out, and we are bringing joy to people's lives, and that's a pretty cool thing. So I want you to do this. Stand with me this morning. You know how to do offering. I don't need to, to, to tell you that again. I do want you to do two things. Take your envelopes, if you would, if you're willing to. Drop them in the offering basket on your way out the door. Take your communion cups with you. Drop them in the waste basket. Please don't confuse the two on your way out the door. And we'll tidy ourselves up as we get ready to leave the day. And then uh, you don't have to go home right away. We have some fellowship scheduled for next door. Don't forget to meet with Pastor Dale about our Valentine's dinner. Because we can only pull that off with a bunch of help. Amen? Amen. So that's the time to meet with him. Mark, would you come dismiss us in prayer this morning if you would, please? Thank you. Father God, thank you for an awesome service. Lord, thank you for using <laughs> real life event in Jesus' ministry where he asked a man, what can I do for you? And Lord, that's the question you're posing to us today as we begin a new year. What would you have me do for you? The Lord is asking us. Thank you for Pastor's exposition of this passage. Thank you, Father, for challenging us. But Father, thank you also for giving us believing hearts to know that you're a mighty God. You're a loving God. You're a persistent God, and you will stay after us. Thank you, Father, for giving us ears to hear what your Spirit is saying this morning. Guide us as we embark upon a new year, Lord. Give us your strength. Give us your wisdom. Give us a more focused prayer life. That's one of my requests. A more disciplined prayer life. Father, help us be all you want us to be in this new year as we serve our community, as we, as we reach out to those who don't know you the way we love to know you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Bless God's people as they go. Amen. Amen. Amen.